All right, so oh, this is not a paraboloid, it's a parallelopiped. Okay, so this is the second of the parallelopiped. Uh, pipe, parallelopiped, I don't know how, to, I don't know what goes there. Sometimes it's an I, sometimes it's an E. It's not up to me, it just does it its own way. Um, so this is the second of these parallelopiped things that I wanted to do. Really what I wanted to do is um, now look at the center of mass rather than the centroid. So the other one was a centroid. The centroid and the center of mass are going to be the same place if you have a constant density. Now we'll have a um, varying density so there'll be different things. Right? So you remember this guy looked like this. We had a square, came on down. I have a feeling that the uh, actual values that I chose go like this. Um, right, and I previously chose, and I see no reason to change this choice, to have my um, axes here, x, y, z, right? And a um, little shadow. Right. Make it arty. So we've got this guy here, and we want to figure out, um, you know, will it fall? Actually, we don't want to figure out if it will fall. Actually, that, that's not actually a bad idea. Why can we figure out if it will fall? That is awesome. I, I hadn't thought about that. Um, so that will happen if the center of mass is, is out here past um, A over 2 in the y direction. So let's see if we can figure out if it falls or not. That will be awesome. All right. And that's actually the way I would generally, um, on a more uh, robust homework problem, rather than, you know, the homework problems in this class have been pretty, pretty lame. They've been pretty straightforward. Uh, you, you know, if you've had me in some other class, right, then you will notice that the uh, homework in those other classes tend to ask questions like that, you know. So, you know, have this slanted parallel of pipe ed. Uh, has this density function, does it fall or does it not fall? You know, that's a really good question, or a, that's an adequate question. Um, you know, this sort of thing, this is just a little bit too, uh, I used A before, right? This is just a little bit too uh, straightforward, cut and dry, that sort of thing. And it doesn't always lead to the kind of learning that I want you to learn, right? Uh, it's nice if you want simple, simple tests. It's bad if you want people to learn what to do for the next class, uh, which probably means that it's worse for this class. However, you know, this is an online class, which means that, hey, um, I have a limited amount of resources that I can do for this class, and I, and if I'm not going to ask you on the problems that are actually graded things that are, you know, the way I like them, then I'm not going to do examples or I'm not going to um, assign homework problems that are a little more complicated, right? A, a little more freeform is actually what I should say. Uh, so, I guess you're just um, stuck with these things for now. But I will actually try to make that determination. We might not be able to make that determination, okay? That's not necessarily true. So we, we might have to um, figure out something about the parallelopiped and say, when does it fall? So what are the dimensions for this slanted parallelopiped that will make it fall? And that's also pretty cool. Okay, so we need to draw this guy, which I already did. And then we have to deduce the integration limits. Doesn't that make you feel like um, Sherlock Holmes a little bit? Running around, deducing things. 
that's what mathematics and the physics and stuff like that's all about, right? It's making you feel like Sherlock Holmes. Except with, you know, cooler mysteries, right? Whether or not this falls is a lot cooler than, you know, um, any mask of the... No, that that's Poe. Uh, let's see. The Scar... A study in Scarlet, right? Oh, yeah, it's... It's much cooler than a, uh, The Study in Scarlet. That's not true. That was a pretty fun story. All right. Okay, so let's see. 2H over A times Z minus A over 2, blah, blah, blah. Now, we, I walked through these before. Um, here we've got this uh, slope, this line here in the, in the Y direction, and we're adding and subtracting A over 2, which is the width. Um, so this is the only complicated bit, and we're going to have to keep a little more tab, a little bit um, more uh, I don't know, a little bit more something or other. We're going to have to keep tabs on this guy to make sure what, be sure of what's going on. Uh, we don't want him to do anything uh, strange or uh, untoward. Uh, let's see. So we need to find first. Uh, the mass. So remember, the center of mass is you take these mass mo mass moments and you divide by the mass, right? And the mass is just, you know, this integral over the uh, volume of the uh, density, which is a function of position. It's a field. It's a scalar field, dv, all right? Um, so what would I like to do with that? Well, you know, we've got just got X's and Y's and Z's. So um, how are we going to do this? We, we end with the H's, then we do the stuff that can depend on that. 2H over A, Z minus A over 2. 2H over A, Z plus A over 2. And then we just do minus A over 2 to A over 2. And then we are hunky-dory. We are so happy now that we're doing this, aren't we? Um, let's see, then I have this rho naught prime times z. Uh, you might remember I like the little prime symbol there, uh, just f so that I can remember. I I've got something to note here that this has units of density over meters, right? So when I multiply it by this z, which has density of meters, um, which has units of meters, uh, I end up with the units of density. So if I need to check units to, to somewhere in the middle, if I get a little bit lost and I'm worried about what's actually going on, I can do it. Uh, so we did most of this before. You'll remember that the z bits cancel out here, so we have a squared for that. And then we have z integral zero to h of uh, rho naught prime z dz. That's actually a constant. I should have pulled that out already. Hey, it doesn't matter. You can pull it out any time, right? And you'll be fine. And so then I have just the integral of z dz. So that's going to be z squared. So I've got that rho naught prime over 2, a squared, h squared, and that is my mass, all right? And that's fine for mass because I multiply something with units of density times three units of, um, of uh, length, and that should give me the mass. But this has density over length, so I need four to give me mass. And that's exactly what I have. So that, again, you know, that little um, prime there, just to help me remember things about units. And if you're watching this and you just do math all the time, you don't really care about units, that's fine. But if you're gonna do physics or engineering, you better really, really, really care about units, okay? You're, you, it, it's going to really help you a lot. So then we need to find our, my moments. Find the moments. I hope they're called moments. I call them moments. Okay, I want to do mx, right? So that's going to be the integral of v rho r um, x dv, okay? Uh, let's see what goodies going on here. You might notice by some of my, um, some of the ways I've started to write things, I've actually gotten fairly deep about uh, three or four weeks into what I'm going to do for next semester in uh, 
in my um, electrodynamics class. So my notation is going towards that electrodynamics uh, notation. So take it for what you'll take it for, right? Uh, so we have integral, integral 2HA over AZ minus A over 2. Probably should not have just done this. I should have waved my hands and been done with it. But I didn't. And so we're left with these two parts um, because I'm going to just pull this one out. Minus A over 2, A over 2. It's always nice to pull it out to let everybody see. There we go. So this guy's easy to work with and this guy's not so hard to work with. Again, the Z bits cancel, so we just have an A. And this is going to be 1 half A squared, so we have um, rho naught prime over 2. Um, A squared times A, which is A cubed, right? And, oh, no, 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 we don't want to do that because the same thing happens that happened before, right? This guy is x squared minus x squared or a squared minus a squared or something like that. So the whole thing is zero right there. Ah, good. I could have hurt myself, but I didn't. I'm happy. Okay, for y we do the same thing, only we multiply by y. So now that's going to put us in a um, bit of a bind, right? So that isn't going to be as nice as before, but it is going to be the same thing as before, right? So we have got a z here that we don't have to worry about. Minus a over 2, um, y dy dz, and then we have that integral from minus a over 2 to a over 2 dx. Okay, so this guy is now going to be a, the y bit, um, the z squared and a squared terms cancel. So what we're going, what we're going to end up with is just the middle bit four times the product of these two things there. So, um, and somewhere in here we had to have that uh, rho prime. All right, so we have a rho naught prime, right? Um, we get a one half again from um, the y being um, the y coming up and doing its thing. Um, then we have an a from this guy over here, so we just have zero to h left of um, two h over a times z times um, a over 2 times, like I said, 4, right? Times a z that's already there, all right? That's always fun. That's enough fun, right? Well, these guys cancel, those guys cancel, combine those things. Uh, we have... I'm going to have to send everything down to the next line anyway, so we may as well do it now. Uh, so four times one half is uh, two rho not prime times a. Um, did I get anything left over? I've got this h comes out two. All right. So now I have an integral from zero to h of um, z squared. All right. Dz. Okay, so that's just one third h, cu h cubed, right? So we have two rho naught prime over three a h cubed. All right, so we're okay with that guy. All right. Mm, let's see. M z. All right. So m z. Uh, things are fairly nice, right? With m z. Now we've got to, we can remember the whole thing with the x and the y's. Just going to a squared, we're okay with that. Got that rho naught prime, not worried about him. Zero to h, z uh, squared already. Yeah, z squared. Um, dz, right? And that guy is going to go to, uh, 
one third. Right. Uh, row not prime. A squared. H cubed. Oh, I have an H to the fourth here. Good, good, good. All right. Okay. And so now those are my moments. Oops, excuse me. That Z1 is off the page. Yeah. Not a lot of work on that one, so we don't have to really worry about it. So let's just find the center of mass. Okay. <clears throat> So the center of mass, XCM is just taking one of these and dividing by those. So we've got zero, right, in um, the first component. Second component, we have this guy divided by that guy. So the row not primes cancel. Uh, this guy, this two comes back up here. So we have four thirds, um, H, squared over a and now we have um, two-thirds uh, h okay so now we have to find when we, we want to say that Okay, so this is my center of mass so that's the solution to what we said what we wanted to find out was does the thing fall down Right, and that's going to depend on H and A. So we need uh, this Y component here, which is four thirds H squared over A to be greater than A over two, and then it falls over, right? Um, so we can then say my, uh, I can make a, design for this height so we can oh that's actually this probably what's best is to um, keep the H and the a, H's and A's on one side and some numerical factor on the other so now we have sort of a figure of merit H over A squared is greater than um, let's see three eighths so unless this is very very squat right uh, you know the the um then this thing's going to fall down so this is h over a squared h squared over a squared taking the square root of that's not going to mean anything to me maybe it means something to you but this is this is my folly down e equation this is my fall down equation all right um so that's the condition uh, again, if you took physics 2 with me, you know that I love to give problems where you have to figure out a condition. Um, and I think that's probably the best kind of problem that you can ever have, is to sit around and try to figure out uh, under what condition is this or that or the other thing happening. Now, we do see something here that we um, think is reasonable, right? So because it's getting more dense up here, it should be, the center should be higher than than the cent the centroid right and the centroid was exactly in the middle this is about two-thirds that's actually completely reasonable with the um linear uh density thing i think we had a linear density going down in another video so that ended up being one-third be below there so that's that works out pretty well uh again this is just some number i don't really have a really good way to tell if that's really great or not although uh, this is the right sort of form. If you do this a lot, you'll notice that this is the right sort of form for that Y thing. And X, that makes a lot of sense because um, there's just as much of the uh, coming at, out, of, out at you as going away. So each bit over here cancels a bit over there, so the X should be zero. All right, so that was great. That was lovely. I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did and that you'll come and listen to me again sit around and work math problems for you so you can have an example in the middle of the night. Okay, bye now.